Welcome back. Random TV Reviews, your girl, and And it's your boy, Stella. All right, we're coming in real late with this Love and Marriage Huntsville, but we're going to go ahead and get into it. Kiki, do you love me? Come on, Listen, now. the shirts always come from Power in Black. Use my code Lynette. Saves you 25% off. Oh. L-Y-N-E-T-T-E. Don't pay this shirt any mind because I have washed it several times. Times. Yeah. But let's go ahead and get into this episode because it didn't really give us much, but it's enough that we can give some of our opinions and interject some some exactly. comedic humor in it. We can do that. Yeah, Mari. So first we see that Tiffany ends up over at Mel's and she's telling Mel, you know, like, listen, I went over there to the book signing because Martel invited my husband, which invited me. We went over there, and to my surprise, you and the kids were missing, and they are the authors of this book. Like you really couldn't figure out a way. Basically, she was telling her, you couldn't figure out a way to make it so that your kids could be present. Mel was like, first of all, <laughs> yeah. what you're not going to do is heal his side and come over here and try to check me about the fact that my children weren't at this event that I found out about two days prior. I had a death in my family. I had to go. It was on my weekend anyway, so I don't feel like I needed to... I didn't need to curb any of the things that I had going on for something that I just found out about two days ago because it was a better way this could have been handled. That's how I took it. Yeah. That's that's how I took it too, yeah, because that's one of the the issues that we always have with them. Mm -hmm. They take a piece of information and just just run with it. That's Mm -hmm. why I got that stuff with Marceau got so out of control of them doing that. Which part? Uh, about them, uh, about the transparency piece and them, oh, yeah, um, yeah. and them adding, you know, their Add advice them. and their piece on to Muslim, advice. which I know you going you going you going. I'm gonna to get that. right into it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so it's her coming in and going at Mel sideways about that and not knowing all the facts. Because even after yeah. Mel laid all the facts out, she was like, "Oh, I didn't know that." Yeah. So that's why we tell y'all don't. Don't go in a situation with information from one side. Yeah, from one side. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, you gotta bet out. <laughs> That's all how that. you get yourself in trouble. Yeah. So then we ended up getting a. I actually love this conversation that Mel had with Tiffany about her ex, and come to find out, we kind of heard her say some things about her ex and yeah. him being deceased and whatnot. So she never really wanted to speak a lot about the situation. But all in all, it seems like. Tiffany had her soulmate. Like, she had the love of her life. The man loved her to the ends of this earth and back. But at the time when they were together, Tiffany said that he just could not give her the life that she wanted. And I'm like, this is one of those very honest conversations that don't many people have. And even Mel was like, wow, so you basically broke his heart. Because you wanted more. You wanted more money. You wanted the things that you knew that you... Or you felt like you deserved at the time. Right. And he wasn't able to give it to you. So you decided that I'm going to leave the love of my life behind. The person that loves me, respects me, holds me down to chase after something or someone that can give it to me. Yeah. That Because you can. And I was like, wow. Yeah, because yeah, like you said, too many, too many people don't admit that. No. Yeah, uh-uh. because that's that's a very hurtful, hurtful thing. You know, uh, I definitely not gonna sit here and, and prejudge her because I understand when you want more out of life, and we don't have like in yeah. the central, we don't have all the facts <laughs> uh, to be able to make a, an honest judgment of the situation. But I do appreciate her I appreciate actually the being transparent, like For we once. like we've been talking about. Yeah, because that's good. Now. Now, some other people, you know, I hear on social media is probably slaying you right about now. You for never that. <laughs> but I get it. But, I get but, it. Like, yeah. when we first got married, like, we were barely making it. Like, mm-hmm. rubbing pennies together. I don't know how long she was into the marriage before she realized that, hey, hey, yo, right. I'm tired of struggling. Struggling is a lot on a marriage. So, yes. you can have the person that's your perfect mate. But if you have that financial issue and it's ongoing... To, and you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Right. I can't imagine that you get comfortable in that. Like, mm. you will start to seek, not even someone else. I can take care of myself and be at a, at peace with the things that I can provide for myself rather than both of us in here just struggling. Right. So, I don't know. It could have been like that. But what's y'all thoughts on it in the comments and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. Y'all definitely let us know that one. 
So then we see Kimmy. Kimmy invited Tisha because you know they're back from the honeymoon and whatnot. Yeah, it was. And you know, picking up where they left off at when Maurice said, listen, after we get back, you're gonna have to have a conversation to about um with Tisha about the slumber party thing over at Mel's house. So in true fashion to the show, that's yep. what happened. But I loved how See, Kimmy is my girl. <laughs> because although Kimmy spoke her truth, she did understand and she realized that her speaking her truth may have come over incorrectly when it hit Tisha. And what she told Tisha at the reunion when they asked her, if you and Tisha were not family, would you be friends? And she said, absolutely not. And she told Tisha, she said, I just want to make sure we're in a good place. And Tisha was like, I felt what you said. I understand because I know how you are. But yeah, basically it's so many words. Dang, it's like that. It is like that. You have people in your life that if it wasn't for the bond that we have already created, created? or the fact that you're my family, you would have been gone. Yeah, I would have <laughs> gifted a long time ago. You would have yeah. been. And like Kimmy said, you've seen me have one smooth argument with somebody and you are, you're disposable. I'm like yep. that, Kimmy. That's why I understand <laughs> it. But there are some people that, okay, we can argue a few times. And I'm going to have to keep you around because you're going to have to get jumped out to get out my life at this point. That's what she was saying. She was like, Tisha, you're not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. We love each other. But, but, but who the, you are, I would not be friends with you on a normal day. But the question is, how long should you be in a relationship with somebody that y'all have those tussles that you won't... How long is that? Um, is that 60 days, 90 days, no, six months, no, um, a year? Very situational. I think it's, yeah, it's very situational because I've had some people that I have, even though they've been really, really close to me. Yeah. I ain't going to take but so much of this, of this bull. We my, can be cordial. My, my opinion, that's subjective. Everybody has their own time frame. Yes. So you just can't say, hey, you got to be friends with somebody for, you know, 90 days for y'all can have an argument before you go like this. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so within this conversation, this is when Kimmy was able to tell Tisha, like, listen, <laughs> mm. you won't at the summer party and whatnot at the, at the sleepover, but your show was there <laughs> in conversation. <laughs> and she said, I was really taken aback that Kiki was there and she was speaking on you and your situation or a whole, whole, whole lot and whatnot. And I said, I hate when they make my girl Kimmy look like she being messy. I don't like it, but I know it's part of the show. And yeah. it has, and the show has to go on. But I said, I don't like it. I don't <laughs> like it at all. So let's go ahead and flip over. Maurice goes over there to black and <laughs> visits <laughs> my soul. And I said... Maurice got a little, like, got a little swag to his walk, a little sachet to the little. I said, "What's going on here?" He said, "That's what that Puerto Rico do to you, man." I said, "Oh, okay." Uh huh. They found out what what what, what happened up over there. <laughs> he said, "Dog, we be, we we be, this came back from this honeymoon, yo." Uh huh. I realized my wife likes to travel. Yeah, she she a whole different person, person on, on vacation, vacation dog. We yeah. that what we've been trying to tell, tell you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you? Never mind. Stay out of my business. But that's what we've been trying to tell, tell you. you. Yeah. Kimmy stayed home. Quanisha went on vacation. Yep. I know she did. He said. He said. I know she did. Marcel. <laughs> Maurice said he couldn't stay. She couldn't stay, stay up all off for me, me man. Marcel was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to hear that That's about my, my sister. sister-in-law, man. You know, no, better I, yet, <laughs> I don't want to hear that about my brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's really the one. So, um, but, but I'm I, glad they had a good time, though, they man. They did, and I love where Marcel. I mean, not Marcel. Lord, too many M's. Maurice said, "We don't need a lot." Yeah. To have a good time together, yeah. like we ain't have an itinerary this long. Yep. I'm like that too. I said that was us. That scribe was just perfect. Yeah. I always tell the queen, I was like, I don't care where we at. It's just as long as just me and you there and we can have some fun. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else that come along only it's, adds it's to the bonus. fun that, that we're gonna create anyway. So we just you know, you just coming into that to that energy. Is it that that we create the fun or is it that chaos and crazy people always attract to us? Oh, that that's a part of it too. Yeah. But we make the point that anytime <laughs> we go on vacation or, or travel somewhere, we're going to bring good energy to the table. Absolutely. Every time. Every yep. time. And yep. we have a good time no matter where we go. It could be it could be a $5,000 vacation 
Oh, a, oh, a nine hundred dollar vacation. But, but, but speaking of vacation, yo, just in case, just in case you did know, oh, yeah. you know the queen, you know, and I, we have our own travel agency. You know, the queen is an actual travel agent. So if y'all looking for somebody, you know, to help you book a carnival a cruise, yeah, a carnival cruise, you trying to go on this year, next year, whatever, you know, hit us yeah. up, coldfundtravel.com, man. Everything out there, we got international trips coming up. We got, we got a, a group international yeah, trip. Yep. Check that out on yep, the page. We got a subscriber. Um, um, cruise coming up also so all that's over there on cofundtravel.com so go ahead and check it out it it's a little shameless plug right there y'all will hang out with us on vacation man. hey pay yeah. for by us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the trip not yeah. the trip yeah everybody say fix that <laughs> that advertisement that, let's go ahead and say that and whatnot so then lewis pops his tail up over there and i said oh this is where Mar, uh, Marceau and, and Lewis are going to have the conversation. They're coming to the mind. They, okay. <sighs> Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. Lou. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> all in all, Lewis still... I, I think it's a play up for the camera. You cannot make me believe after all that Marceau has said to him... He still don't doesn't under, under, get it. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think. I it's, think it's a play up. Yeah, it has to yeah, be. Yeah, I think. I think he's a whole lot more smarter than than what they <sighs> what they coming off. But I want to say though, I like Lewis though. Yeah, I do yeah, too. Yeah, I, I really do. Just this situation, I was like, ding ding, when is it gonna click for you, right? It's there? the wife. Yeah, when is it gonna click? But yeah, I like Lewis though. Yeah, because he seems like he's even cute. Like he's one of those just chill dudes. You go to the Spooka yeah. Lounge, smoke some cigars with. But I, but I feel like the camera is making him be drummers and he's not really no, no, no. drummers. Nah, yeah, I, I yeah. Dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> I got my own word, drummerish. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, but I love what before they had this conversation and whatnot, Marceau said, I think you need to go ahead and take that shot. You know, yeah. play it yeah, off. off well, yeah, yeah. If I the had, fact yeah, that yeah. this would have been different if I had, had that, that shot. shot. Yeah. He said, Well go ahead and take the shot. And basically, Marceau said it the way he's been saying it a million times. Listen, I can't tell you to not have an opinion about what you see or my marriage or anything like that. Right. What I do have a thing about is you feeling that you have been entitled to speak on it because yeah. you don't know me like that. Right. Maurice was like, I have earned the right to be able to speak some things into my brother's life and on his marriages, on his marriage in certain situations, you have not earned that yet. Right. It's almost like if you go, cause everybody, everybody knows black church. It's almost like you just show up at somebody church and their pastor take you to the back and want to just speak over your life. No, no, you don't. You might be a pastor, whatever, but you don't know me like that. Yeah, you don't know me like you that. Don't know, my pastor knows me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. That's kind of what he was saying. Like, you you stay the course, continue to be who you are, continue just to, to ride it out, be with us, have a good time, get closer to us, get to know us, but don't take bits and pieces of stuff you saw on previous episodes, episodes and to form a, an opinion about me and that you want to mold me and shape my marriage into what you feel is it it's supposed to be and you ain't been married long enough to do that right and then it all didn't click for him until Marceau them gave the analogy say for instance you walked into black and you heard some people talking about you and your wife's marriage what would you say oh they don't have a right to speak into my marriage exactly, exactly. that's because people don't know you that's exactly what he's saying but it was another part in there where he was like but Marceau, I've been knowing you. He said, no, no, no. You don't no, know me. You know, you know of me. me. Yeah. And I said, it must have been true because he had no comeback on it. Just because you know somebody don't mean you know them. Like, like for example, even on a YouTube channel, people right. say they say they feel like they know us. Y'all, y'all, You don't really know you us. You don't really know You know me. of us on camera, but you don't know us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. Black like we don't know y'all. No. Yeah. So I can't roll up on you like subscriber number. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know me like that. <laughs> Just cause we did a little clickety clack 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 enter. You don't know me like that. So all in all, it was kind of like Maurice had to step in and kind of just be the um the navigator of all of it. As this. always. And 
Lewis ended up apologizing to Marceau and was like, dog, I get it. I had no right to speak on your stuff. So Maurice was like, so Marceau, you don't think that you owe Lewis an apology? And he was like, no, what I owe him an apology for? And I kind of was on that too. Like, I'll give you an apology just so that we can, can move on. But what am I apologizing for? Because Marceau even said it. Everything that I said was a direct reaction to, to the what, stuff that, that y'all said. said. Yeah. So I didn't come at you in no ill will or ill intent. Right. It was a reaction. <laughs> so then here go Maurice talking about yeah. something when he was a young boy. I said, don't do that. Yeah. But <laughs> the other part that got me was when he when Louis when when um Maurice was telling him the reason that you need to apologize because when you had Lewis on the run, you was right obsessed. So I was like, had him on the run? What are we talking about? What, what do you about? mean? Like, I yeah. was, <laughs> It was a lot going on in this episode that I feel like was chopped and screwed so much. Like you had him on the run? That I was losing the essence of what the heck was going on, especially the Tiffany and the Stormy thing. I was like... What are we doing here and why? I guess because we're trying to bring Stormy into the fold mm -hmm. as kind of like the new destiny. I don't know. But let's just go ahead and talk about Stormy. Stormy and, um, invites Tiffany over because she says she can't admit that she felt like they got off on the wrong foot. Yeah. So she wants to clear the air with her and everything. And then Tiffany just gets to talking and talking and talk. And Stormy said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I zoned out about like five, five citizens ago. But and I felt her though. Yeah. I, you ever been with somebody like that, that? That they don't let you say nothing. I just keep. Oh, you pointing at me? Wait a minute. No, no. no. I, I do let you talk. Well, anyway, we're not talking about me right now. But, uh, yeah. I do let her talk. Don't don't be listening to her. Don't don't take the he information. He does let me talk, but Stanley talks, y'all. You all, you would probably think that I'm the, I'm the one that talks a lot. Only because I lead this review. I'm not really a talker. That's the talker. Oh, she. Oh, yeah, she is a talker. I talk to people I like, like yeah. people I know. No, I'm an introvert. You, I got to really vent you out for. I have a conversation with you. Yeah. I darn near need you so scared about me. <laughs> I'm like, but everybody attracts. But me. my point is, when you do it to get in a conversation with somebody and they just keep talking and don't let you say nothing, it turns into wong 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 wong. said. I zoned out like five, five, six sentences ago. Like what we, and then they ended up getting in a conversation about IVF and almost dying, having a baby. That's a how. Did yeah, because they went from trans talking about no, transparency. about transparency and, and kind of like it looked like they was getting ready to argue, and then they jumped over to that. Yeah, I, we'll take it. But I, I ain't gonna argue with the people to get paid good money to do clips and stuff. I can't. But anyway, <laughs> so we have Martel. Martel is over there with his manager, Melanika. And they're rebranding Martel like that. He has a cookbook where he was on the cover shirtless. She was like, we need to get rid of all of that because at the end of the day, we need to make you marketable. Um, and what we need to do is also get get in front of a big crowd when it comes to this book with your children. Let's get them out, get them in front of a billboard where you can get some pictures and some, you know, then we can do an event over in Atlanta with the cookbook and have some chefs sample the food and i was like okay that's a good look especially yeah. atlanta i mean that's right. the scene yeah. right there and he was like you know i'll go ahead and invite the fellas you know um marceau and maurice and melanie was, was like, like oh you sure about that she was like um y'all can really y'all can really like do some stuff on social media that ain't always good for business so i want to make sure that even the presence of them is it going to derail what we're trying to do business wise? Right. Because she said having to do cleanup and and PR work is a mother buckle when y'all <laughs> decide that y'all want to show out on social media yep. in a way that should have been handled in a text to each other. Boom. <laughs> I like you, uh, Melanica. I for what I'm seeing so far, she's doing a real good job of helping him get back on his feet, though. Yeah, but mm, that there um. Uh, Martell, he looked really broke in this episode, man. Like, he looked like... I mean, he should be. I mean, this is what you did. It's, I mean, it's yeah. a part of the reaping process. Yeah. But he looked so broken. Like, mm -hmm. he's sitting in that chair just like, whatever life gives me right now is what I'm going to do. I got my wine, but mm -hmm. I ain't happy. I ain't got my fine. 
you know, my kids, and they want that to sign it. You know, they're authors, you know. They're, uh, they're, uh, that's on you. Yeah. Why yeah, would you, you plan something without a <clears throat> solid plan that included them? Like, and and even Melanie, because she, she, she gets it. I thought yeah. she got it last week, but the way she was speaking, it was kind of in circle. But I know this week, she definitely got it. And, yeah. and you can't argue with it. And she even told him. You make sure that when you schedule this thing where we want to do a billboard shoot, that it's mm -hmm. on your weekend. Yeah, that you got the kids. Yeah. Boom. Yep. That's all. That's all we gonna <laughs> ask for, you know. So Tisha, I think this was the last scene. It's the last scene I'm gonna talk about. But Tisha, now that she is, she's has this information about Kiki over there, kind of sharing more than she should share. She invited her over to Black so that they can have a conversation about it. What I got from this conversation right here, and this is when I'm going to plug my girl Really Big TV. If y'all don't watch Really Big TV, y'all yeah, go ahead and get over there. Because whole girl be knowing the tea. I'm trying to tell you, when we first started this show together on season one, yep. me and Really Big would be talking and the stuff that would be hitting our inbox. See, I'm not the person that put that kind of stuff out there, but it didn't mean I didn't know it. Right. <laughs> Look, I knew about Ariel before it dropped. Yep. <laughs> I was like, whoa. But my girl be knowing the tea, and I didn't watch her video because I will never watch a video before I do a review. I can't do it. But she had something in her title about what the possible secret was that Kiki didn't want to be out. Y'all go over there, look at it. Yeah. If it is what I think it is, then I just gave y'all a good old plug to go over there. And y'all subscribe anyway. You should. Yeah, be. yeah, man. But... In the episode, what had happened was, I felt like, this is what I feel. I feel that Tisha wronged Kiki four years ago. Uh -huh. Because what had happened was, Mel had invited Kiki to something over at Mel and Martel's house via um, Tisha and Marceau. Kiki had a situation going on at her house. That Tisha felt like if you're going to go over there to Mel and Martel's house, I feel like it's my responsibility to tell them what could be entering their home. <laughs> go to Really Be TV's <laughs> channel and, and look at the video. I haven't seen it myself, but the title can pretty much make sense of why this conversation went the way it was. Kiki didn't appreciate it because she said, you put my personal business out there to people and it was embarrassing it and it was not true tisha said listen we had a long drawn out conversation about this i apologize we said we we're going to move on for, from it it is what it is i feel like this was the opportunity to, to get, get back tisha back yep. for what she did <laughs> yep and the crazy thing about it as life would have it you did it in the same setting that it was. Yup. I was getting ready to say the same thing. Yup. Yup. So. But I, but in all seriousness, though, I hope that because they are cousins, that they can find a way. Because what Tisha was like, let's, 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 let's we cut, just ties. cut ties. And I was like, nah, we can't. Nah, we can't cut ties with it. Maybe just y'all might not just deal with each other for, for a little a season. bit. But yeah, come back and work that thing out, fam. Well, Tisha, yeah. she put a um, <clears throat> picture of her and Kiki on social media. Oh, so they good now? And, okay. she, and she put on there like, we good or something like okay, that. Okay, yeah. As long like, as y'all good, yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. There's that's... nothing like cousins. I'm trying to tell right, you. Like, right, there's nothing right. like you cousins. You go through some stuff with cousins. I mean, yeah. you know, your cousin, you know, they don't whoop your A and, <laughs> and, and, and they don't whoop your A. Y'all done, done made mud castles together mm -hmm. and play hide and go see. Yeah. Red light, green light, one, two, I three. Swear. So yeah, and cousins can get you to do stuff. You like. I was trying to have a chill day yesterday. Oh, he going. <laughs> My cousin was like, "Cuz, what you doing? I'm not doing nothing. I just came from the store. Get dressed. We about to go out. <laughs> That's why all this video is late. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, I'm not bucking with my cousins no more ever. I'm not saying that, but you know when a, a night was so good that it was bad, you just said you ain't ever doing it again? Just think was out there messing around with it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, so then we looked, because Tisha storms outside and was like, you know what, buck this. And I said, where you going, Tisha? This show spot. You put that hoe out. 
But then I realized that Tisha was going outside to have a conversation, conversation with, with, Kimmy. with Kimmy on the phone about how it went and whatnot. And I hated how she was saying, Kimmy said, I was like, yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I'm like, you just, you ratting Kimmy out now. I mean, at the same token, I mean, but, who but she would know where it came it? from. Yeah, she know where it came from. Yeah. And then here come Kiki. She come outside like a mighty morphing Power Ranger talking about so. So who you on the phone with telling my business now? I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and that was basically it. Like I said, they didn't so. give us much. But we hope that we had given y'all something to laugh about, talk about. Yeah, and man. <laughs> we will see y'all in the next video. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two, two down. down. Holla. Holla. Boom.